On the Origin of Learning Theories by Yuri Pavlov But he who gladly sings the triumph of Zeus shall hit full on the target of understanding of Zeus who put man on the way to wisdom by making it a valid law that by suffering they shall learn. Agamemnon, Aeschylus, 5th century BCE Many dictionaries define learning as a process of gaining knowledge and skills. It isn't a totally bad definition, but one that spurs many more questions. Who gains knowledge and why? Who discovers or invents it for us? What is knowledge in the first place? In the, in the branch of philosophy called epistemology, great minds attempted to unravel the mystery of human knowledge. Epistemology has several schools of thought. Two of them, empiricism and rationalism, oppose each other on the nature of knowledge. Empiricism relies on senses, on experience. We sense, therefore we know. Rationalism relies on reason, on the mind. We think, therefore we know. Think of a circle as an example. We know that the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter is pi, a constant number. It's universal. It's true for all circles in the cosmos. Empiricists may think of this piece of knowledge as something that was discovered by scientists in a series of measurements and experiments. Empiricists would say that circles and the relationship between the circumference and the diameter would exist even if humans did not exist. This knowledge has always been out there. Rationalists may think that that relationship between the circumference and the diameter is not a nature's given. It is a product of people's mind. Pi was not given to us by nature. Math formulas in general are not given to us by nature. But humankind was able to think of pi and of its importance in the field of mathematics. Rationalists would say that pi was invented rather than discovered. Empiricism and rationalism were springboards for the philosophies of learning. Empiricism predated objectivism and rationalism predated constructivism. Objectivism states that knowledge already exists in the world, and our task as humans is to figure out how to acquire it in its original form. On the con contrary, constructivism says that the world has scattered objects and random information which humans structure in the way that is relevant to them. On the other hand, we have one truth that is independent of us, that's objectivism. On the other hand, there are several truths, and sometimes one truth prevails another at a particular time. That's constructivism. Clearly, objectivism and constructivism in a very fundamental way disagree with each other on how we learn. So do we acquire or do we construct knowledge? Plants need water to grow. Is it acquired or is it constructed? Speech is a form of interaction that is unique for human beings. Is it acquired or is it constructed? A running car cannot stop immediately the moment we apply brakes. Is it acquired or is it constructed? Perhaps we can make a case for either of the choices. How do learning theories, however, tie to all that? Learning theories come into the picture when we try to see what exactly happens to us humans when we learn things. In other words, how does learning occur? For the most part, this is the realm of psychology, educational psychology to be concrete. Learning theories are our best guesses in how learning occurs. They do not speculate whether knowledge is acquired or constructed. They already chose their position on that. Objectivism, with its idea of acquiring knowledge, is the foundation of two opposing theories of learning, behaviorism and cognitivism. Constructivism, with its idea of constructing knowledge, lay the foundation for the social learning or social cognitive theory. You will discover in this course how each of the three theories describe learning and what educational implications each of them has. 
in a nutshell, they postulate the following. In behaviorism, we are somewhat conditioned to acquire knowledge by external factors. Maybe nature, maybe the teacher, maybe the previous experience. Behaviorism doesn't place much emphasis on human cognition. What is more, behaviorism says that the mechanism of learning is the same for both humans and animals. Cognitivism, on the contrary, asserts that learning happens inside our mind, and some learning capacities are exclusively human. Finally, the social learning theory stands on its own pillar and says that we learn that which is relevant for us at a particular time by observing, mimicking, gaining social approval, finding consensus, and so forth. Although external and internal factors are important in social learning, it is by no means a blending of the two theories, but a radically different perspective on learning. So you have three very independent learning theories to study this semester. They all reject each other in explaining how we learn and give three different definitions of learning, very different from what the dictionary tells you. But please remember, this is because they have different origins. Also, don't be fooled if one theory seems to be more compelling than the others. Each of them has something important to tell us about ourselves, and each has a valid takeaway for you as an instructional designer. Ready for a short quiz? Let's do it. What are the two philosophies in epistemology that have opposing views on the nature of knowledge? What learning theories have roots in objectivism, in constructivism? Match the learning theories with the corresponding statements. Behaviorism, cognitivism, social learning. A. We create shared meanings and try to reach a consensus when we learn. B. We are by and large conditioned to learn things from the outside world. C. We put our mental efforts when we learn something. And number four, why do you think the ancient Greek playwright Aeschylus says in his play Agamemnon that learning happens through suffering? <laughs>